Every 40 seconds, someone in the world dies by suicide. One in four people will experience a mental health disorder at some point in their lives. And loneliness? It's now being called the next public health crisis, as deadly as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, according to the U.S. Surgeon General. As I mentioned, the, the quality and the nature of the stress and the timing of the stress is critically important. We live in a world that glorifies hustle and productivity. What is stress actually doing to our brains and bodies over time? You know, there's a lot of different changes that are occurring as a result of our stressful experiences. And going back to our earlier discussion, some of those are good changes. They're not always bad changes. And so just being kind of stressed out and if that's increasing your productivity level, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a bad thing. In today's episode, I'm joined by Dr. Scott Russo, a pioneering neuroscientist and director of the Center for Effective Neuroscience at Mount Sinai. His research is not just about neurons and synapses, it's about us. How do you bridge the gap between animal models and human applications in your research on depression and anxiety? It's a really good question. We try to focus on things that are conserved across species, uh, whether it be physiological bodily response or whether it be a certain behavior that mice can do that we can also do that's disrupted in the illness. I read somewhere that your body, your muscles is almost like a pharmacy. Every time you contract it, it releases so many beneficial hormones and chemicals that help you manage your stress. Insightful comment that you just made. I want to say two things about it. This, there's two studies that I find really interesting. One is that... So whether you are struggling with your own mental health, trying to understand someone else's, or just curious about what makes us tick, this conversation might just change how you see the world.